Well, how you doing? <laughs> Glad you're here. I, I, forgive me, but I actually thought that Robert was going to start us in this one. He did not, but that's okay. Uh, welcome to uh, <laughs> United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. This is the second week in a row we actually got that correct. So congratulations to us. This is episode 12. I, uh, If you're just listening, then we apologize if there's any dead space like there was last week. We'll try to avoid that this week. We got we got a number of things that we want to talk about uh, because once again, and this time not sports related, I made a prediction or two, and it seems that my track record is absolutely terrible. Anyways, I'm Lionel, and I'm in Toronto, and of course we have Robert in the Nashville area. So, uh, <laughs> uh, do you and want to recap anything? Beginning, if it weren't for an opening blooper, it wouldn't be our podcast. <laughs> exactly so if you're just listening uh too bad uh it, it, maybe it's funny maybe it's not but if you're watching oh my goodness okay yeah. uh let's talk about what was it uh you know what we can get to the stuff that i got wrong later um i think you i think you wanted to bring up something about uh oh no wait i did say something about this yeah you you know what this is one of my predictions uh, what was it last week or the week i think it was last week and i said yes. apple is not going to uh, join with uh, OpenAI and pay all that money. They'll probably get a better deal trying to go with Google because there were rumors that they that they maybe they would uh, get Google's AI uh, Gemini put into the phones. Well, yeah, yeah. I was the one who was wrong, so I'll let Robert. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, <laughs> At least rumored, well, rumored to be wrong. Yeah, uh, <laughs> rumored is correct because you know things change all the time. And you actually sent me the article, and I was kind of looking through it. I, the the, uh, the heading of the article I find. Uh, hilarious. Uh, re Apple reportedly joins forces with OpenAI to shove a chatbot into iOS into 18. IOS 18. <laughs> I see that working. I don't see anything going wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, well, it would be beneficial for everybody in reality. And, and quite frankly, to be honest with you, I think I would rather actually see it that way because I think if the same chat not chat bot, the same AI technology is in everything, then you're talking monopoly. And when you want to move forward, you need competition. I mean, when Microsoft, when people thought Microsoft was the only thing on the block, the only competition was the fact that much like you see with Android phones and all the different manufacturers, Windows was put on different machines. They didn't at the time have machines, right? Um, and even now they're, a small market compared to everyone else. Right. Uh, Apple has always been a closed ecosystem, uh, you know, walled, not so garden in my opinion, but, yeah. but nonetheless. Uh, so, but you always say, but once, once that, once Steve Jobs went back to Apple and got that started up, boom, huge competition, tens of thousands of people a week, students rather, I'm trying to say, we're, we're grabbing up these new iMac and, and, and it, it, it created competition. Not only did it drive the price down on new Windows laptops and desktops, but it made it made for a whole new uh, thing. You know, I mean, everybody needed to have a computer. People started being able to afford it. Now you get to the point where two or three or four computers in your house. You know, yeah. uh, a few years at one point, uh, I knew, I think half of my friends had a computer, usually older, not working very well uh fast forward about four or five years and i knew several people who had two or three computers in their house at least sometimes everyone in the family had a role. right huge change well ironically um so i was when i was reading through the article um there's a link in there about how apple had had discussions with google to use gemini and ironically it was on google's own failure that caused Apple to go to open AI because if you remember that whole fiasco about it answering questions of sensitive matters like race, religion, things like that. Right. That's yes. Why, yes. Yeah. That makes that's sense. why Apple said, Hey, let's, we're going to put the brakes on it. And they paused conversations with Google until Google created a fix, but maybe it didn't come fast enough. I, I don't know, but right. That was just kind of ironic that they were in conversation with them first but because of the controversy that occurred, they decided to go with OpenAI because apparently OpenAI was maybe 
already able to do that? I don't know. I never asked that controversial question, so I don't know. <laughs> you know, I haven't it, either. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, so, I will but, say this though: in my in my limited experience with both OpenAI or or uh, ChatGPT for O, oh, not zero, uh, uh, versus Gemini, I'm finding that more and more they're able to answer the same things and do the same stuff, but but uh i i do find gemini works better for me because it's basically integrated with my phone much better at this point but open ai uh i'm chat gpt 4 o is 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 ahead it's basically where we want at the very least where we want gemini to be um yeah so that i with that said i think that that apple's actually on the right track uh, of going that direction because they are actually ahead of Gemini right now. They've been doing it longer. Uh, Gemini's catching up. They're not. They're not quite there yet. And don't don't get me wrong. That's not to say that that's, that it's not good. I find it incredibly helpful. I have not Googled anything in over two weeks. I simply <laughs> Gemini it and let Gemini <laughs> do the work. It gives me one to however many links I need. I asked it one question. And I knew technically the answer, but I wanted some more detailed information. The answer it gave me was wildly incorrect. It was literally about my Hyundai Elantra. And it said the Hyundai Elantra does not have a 2018 Hyundai Elantra does not have a CVT transmission. It has an automatic transmission. I said, could you please fact check this information? I'm pretty sure that's incorrect. It came back almost instantly with, I'm so sorry. You're absolutely correct. 2018 on the Elantra does have a CVT <laughs> transmission. And I guess what happens is it, it, it looks for a Google link or whatever link it's looking for, probably Google, <laughs> most likely. And it, what it does is, is, is that uh, I guess it finds something that looks relevant and it doesn't actually necessarily fact check itself. Now, one thing I will say is that the newest version of of uh, uh, Chat GPT four O uh, will actually double check, and it does it technically a little bit faster too. To be honest with you, uh, and, and it will check that information. And if there's anything that makes it like which one of these is actually true, because it's not going to keep fact checking unless you act it, ask it to, it will probably give you both answers, saying. This is the answer I think you might be looking for, but this is another possibility. Would you like me to fact check it? That kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Gemini should be doing that, and the newer version of Gemini probably will when we actually have it on phones. I believe the latest version of it is only for developers or beta testers or something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong. For Gemini, I mean. I don't know. I got it actually, uh, which I was going to mention, I got an email today saying that it's available. Um 1.5 is so i don't know if they just means that they just upgraded to 1.5 or there's more integration now than yeah i'm, I'm trying to figure out if that's like a if the paid service if that's what they're talking uh, yeah about. I, I, I don't, don't think uh, that's going to be part of of uh even the gemini advanced i don't think at least not on mobile yet uh, i wouldn't think because if, if if that ha if that was true then it wouldn't have given me that wrong answer i don't because that was why and by the way it happened like three times in two days where it gave me and I started asking it questions to see if it would give me a wrong answer. But I, I give it this. If you suspect, or even if you don't, but you want to be 100% sure, like if you Google something and, it, and it, it tells you what you think is what you're looking for, you usually scroll down to find other links to verify, right? You basically right. do your own hard fact-checking work. It may not necessarily be fact-checking. You're not maybe not going that far, but you are trying to cite more than one source to see if that's correct or not, or at least what the chances of it are. Uh, in this case, you can just literally ask it to fact check itself and it will do it immediately. And it's really cool. Um, so that's one thing I do love about it. But as I said, 4.0. Yeah, I think it's just, so I went back to look at my um, email and because I have that two terabyte Google One plan, I already have the advanced, you know, Gemini advanced. As and it's I, just yeah. saying... It's just saying try Gemini Advanced. Um, that it's now been upgraded to 1.5 Pro for the advanced model. Oh, so they've just so maybe they've just I'm up wrong. Yeah. Well, I don't get any emails like that though, so maybe that is only for 
Wait, no, you just said because you have the same thing I do. So I where do you get all these emails? I mean, you know what? Can we put up a big gif right now that says America with a guy in a flag? <laughs> yeah. Can it get nothing again? Oh I, man. I maybe maybe you don't subscribe to them. I know you don't like notifications. But you know I do. You know <laughs> oh no. wait, subscribe to what though? Uh, I, let me put this aside. I'm actually going to look down here while you do the talking. Yeah, because <laughs> I mean, it's. Um, I'm sure at some point I subscribe to you know emails for maybe the developers or something. I don't. I don't know. I don't know how I got the email. Other than it says specifically, um, if you're already a Gemini Advanced subscriber, these features are available to you today. If not, you can access two month trial. Blah blah blah. So I, yeah. I guess because I'm a two terabyte subscriber with the plan, but you said you are too. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually ask Gemini about it right now. Uh, <laughs> if I subscribe to Gemini Advanced, do I get 1.5 Pro right now, or is that only for developers? Let's see what it says. She said, or is that only for Robert in the U.S.? <laughs> oh, okay. I can't hear it because apparently when I when I mute the thing on the that app on the on the computer, it mutes my phone too. So I guess that's actually not a bad thing. Um, yeah, it synchronized better like Apple. So we'll get into that another time, though. Uh, so, so it says yes. Subscribing to Gemini Advanced gives you access to Gemini 1.5 Pro, which boasts the longest context window of any widely available. Consumer chatbot, this allows you to analyze large amounts of text, code, or video content with exceptional understanding. I don't believe I can do video in the phone app yet, though. No, I cannot, because it literally only shows pictures, no video. So video would be limited to, I guess, the web? I guess it would let you do it on, on, on the website? I guess. When I click the link to try it, it takes me to the website. Yeah, it, uh, you can. By the way, that doing it with analyzing pictures with it is, is great, though. It, it works phenomenal. You know what? As a matter of fact, I'm really curious. You haven't tried that yet. I, I'm. I'm actually. I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna see if I can. Oh, I can't. Do you just drop a picture in there and say, "Tell me what this picture is about"? Yeah, yeah. I want. I wonder. Can I take a picture of this screen? Oh, wait. I want to try something. Okay. Tax. Oh, it didn't attach it. Yeah, it's not working because I got it on the. T I can't. Yeah, uh, it won't do it while I've got it on this. But like, I can ask Gemini a question, but yeah, I can't send anything. So, apparently, it can do direct out of your Google Drive too. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I guess we should have researched some of this prior. I think we the Google ready. Drive is uh, you have to be. Uh, I don't even know what you call it because I don't. I don't. I'm not just... It says exclusive to Gemini Advanced Data Analysis. You can now upload your spreadsheets for faster data processing, exploration, presentation ready charts, deeper insights. See, that upload doesn't Google apply to sheets. anybody who's. That doesn't apply to anybody who's not paying for. What, what do you call it? Um, like it's the Google the One, office, but Gemini. No, not Google One. No, whatever they call, what does Google call their their Office Suite thingy? Oh, Workspace. Workspace, yeah, yeah. That's if you're if you're a subscriber to Workspace only. That it doesn't I know. say anything about that. I I read it somewhere. I I, I don't think I'm going to find it right now. It doesn't say it's exclusive to that. I th I think we should move on to something though, because if we're just looking for article citations right now. Well, I mean, obviously we should have, we should have looked more into details. I know we were going to talk about it, yeah, but I, I didn't think look we into went, I think we went off the track. About, In all fairness, uh, I think we went specifics. off the track, so it, it's fine. Let's let's. Uh, so, uh, at any rate, we yeah. we know where we're going with this. Apple Apple is uh, I, we don't know. It's still rumors, so we don't know if they're actually going to go. With open AI, I think it would be probably best bet because again, competition is, is the best thing. Uh also the fact is that you can you use either of them on any platform. And if Gemini, I think it's available on iPhone already. And if it's not, you you will be able to. And you can certainly use the uh the, the Gemini website even from your iPhone. Um so both yeah, are available. They have what they're wanting to do is both. they're wanting to power Siri with 
open AI. Well, and so that's fine. Want, Again, yeah, it's, it's, it's not just about the app being on so the it's phone. Good. So, it's the yeah. same thing. It, yeah, it's, it's the same thing that, that well, like what I'm saying, though, is that you would still have the option to use the other one for other things if that's what you want it. Just like I will actually use OpenAI to, to to ask questions or do certain things. Once in a while. Well, part of it's because I want to know, so talk about this stuff. And, and other reasons are there are still some things that does a little bit better or add questions and answers better. But Gemini is great, and and within the next year and a half, I think we're going to see it. I mean, they're saying the end of the year, but let's be realistic. Uh, it's going to be more integrated. They are replacing Google Assistant. But for the love of Pete, if you're going to put what at the time will be 2 million, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I want to say coins, like I'm playing COD or something. <laughs> tokens um, or? Tokens, thank you. 2 million <laughs> tokens is what they're talking about by the end of the year. So a year and a half from now, we're going to be looking at at least 2.2 2, 2 million tokens, maybe 2.5 million tokens or something like that. It'll be, if not above, at least on par with anything else at that point. And this is what they want to be able to do is take anything that Google Assistant is capable of doing and put into this. So rather than just implementing this to communicate through Google Assistant to get your Google Home stuff done, uh, it will just be able to do it. And it will be able to do it better and more intuitively. Like, could you imagine saying, instead of saying, hey, you know what? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Get piss everybody off, off, right? Hey, you know what? Please turn this light on and then technically years ago they were supposed to have implemented turn this light and then that light turn that light on also not say it like that but you'd say turn this light on oh i do it all wait the time. a second say that. yeah it doesn't always work though it might work for you but it doesn't work for me it did and then it stopped and sometimes sometimes it will but sometimes i have to wait to see if the first command has even worked properly and it bugs me and it's honestly the issue is actually not in the current Google Assistant. It's the fact that the hardware is kind of getting a little long in the tooth unless you have the newest one. It doesn't get updated as often as it used to. My Google Home is, is the original one, for instance, uh, the one that looks like an air freshener, right? They, yeah. they, they, they replaced it three years ago or something like that, I think. And then we had it around for four years or something. So it's like seven years old. I bought it when it was first came out <laughs> um seven or eight years old i think it is I, I can't remember something along that line um but nonetheless it, 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 they don't always work exactly as you want them to uh, and again i don't really blame google assistant for that it has but but they took some of the functionalities out of google assistant over the years added a few other ones that work differently but well you can only imagine two being commands well exactly that's first I, I, that's a I haven't been able to like turn this, this, and that. It's always just right. this and, and it's this. not just this, that, and that. Imagine having a two million token AI that you can just say, "Hey, well, I guess I could say Gemini because it ain't gonna answer." <laughs> uh, I'd like you to turn on the dining room uh, light and put it to sixty percent and make it orange, and please make the kitchen light blue at thirty seven percent and make sure you turn the bathroom light on and the hall light so that my wife can see as she goes to the bathroom. And then it'll actually ask you, okay, I'm going to do all those things for you. I hope everything's fine. And, and, and your wife will be able to see when she goes to the bathroom. Was there anything else you'd like me to do? That's how and it'll you, answer you. And then you go, oh, right? oh wait, I almost yeah. forgot. Can you make sure the driveway light comes on at exactly, dark time? Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. And, 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 and see, that's possible right now if they implement the stuff in. So this is what they want to do, and this is what they're going to do. How fast it'll get there, I don't know. The only thing I do know for a, almost a fact is that once you tell me all about how much you're enjoying it, I'll have to wait another six years before Canadians can have it. <laughs> and with that said, let's let's move on. I'm a little bitter right now with all the we have to <laughs> wait in Canada for things. So ah, uh, an article from The Verge. We're gonna we're gonna cite them on this one here. We've made fun of The Verge over the years, <laughs> but that's when we, when they were very, uh, they, they were very Apple promoting. Uh, they kind of got rid of that that moniker a long time ago, thankfully. Um, so The Verge uh, has an article. Uh, is this just from yesterday? What's the date today? Uh, oh, this is today days is the, ago. Um, I almost said the twenty first is twenty second. Yeah, this this is from a week ago. <laughs> 
Uh, Tile, tile I don't know why I didn't see it earlier. I think I had two articles and I decided to bring this one up first. Uh, tile owner Life360 picks satellites over partnering with Apple or Google. Um, now, th this is the, the thing. Remember, I, I was talking about, this is the one I was talking about before. And I thought, well, that sounds kind of dumb. But I think there was a little bit more information over why they decided to go that way. Uh, which should be in this other article that uh, for some reason has nothing but advertisement. So, <laughs> uh, did I send you this one at all or have you read anything about it? No, you, we, we discussed it, but you didn't send me the article. Uh, okay. Uh, it, it's basically a, a, a just slightly newer one that doesn't, it doesn't really explain as much as I thought it did. Unfortunately, I skimmed it earlier, but basically the bottom line is, is that they're going to have their satellite network. It's going to work with their Bluetooth. And I can't remember the exact numbers that they have. Tile was once the largest uh, Bluetooth trackers, of course. Uh, obviously, that that completely got taken over by Apple with their Air Tags, but that's because there are more iPhones than there are Tile. <laughs> so, right. uh, you know, being able to say you know get one more item that's again made by Apple, or you know, well, you got the watches, people. you got iPads, and I mean, you got all the uh, yeah, this so, stuff yeah. syncs together beautifully. It's very true. Yeah. Um, so uh, the the bottom line is uh, Tile has decided that they want to go with a satellite. So this means that if you're in the middle of the Mojave Desert or, or, or you know, you, you actually are leaving Las Vegas and you haven't really sobered up yet, you don't know where you are and you shouldn't be driving anyways, but you wake up in the morning next to a, cock, a cockroach, I was going to say, a scorpion, <laughs> you know, next to uh, some rock mesa somewhere. <laughs> It is scorching sun. <laughs> and you're like, I got to call emergency services. Oh, no, there's no service here. What do you do? Right? Uh, <laughs> you could, they could track you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I, I'm going somewhere with it. Uh, obviously, they have their satellite thing. So Apple beat Google to that, by the way, because uh, they theirs is already, they've had this for what, a year or two now? Their Something satellite like that. thing on the phone with emergency calls. Google I think or nine, isn't the Pixel 9 they're going to come out with that? Uh, I, we're hoping we don't know that for a fact yet. Yeah, I think I read. Um, that. yeah, we don't know that for a fact. Uh, I believe the Pixel Eight actually has the hardware, so they could add it to the current yeah. once they have it. But right now, that particular thing, um, they're only talking about it with a couple of companies providing the services in the U.S. So this whole schmigaroo is once again going completely off the wall, as far as I'm concerned. I think Google should keep their mouth shut until they can actually include everybody. That's something you see that Apple or anybody else, any other company in the world does that. But for some reason, Google's like, oh, we can do this right now. And we're going to give it to 16 people in Nevada. <laughs> and that's like, what, what the hell are you doing? Why did you, you did like, they're telling us all this stuff. Anyways, I'm going off. I'm ranting again. We should do a segment where I'd rant. <laughs> anyway that's every week <laughs> bottom line is okay so you you if somebody steals your phone and ends up in the middle of the desert you know it, technically it would be trackable in the middle of the desert in the middle of the arctic antarctica wherever a satellite can reach it well maybe not antarctica it might not be that many satellites flying over there not trackable satellites anyways or tracking satellites but I, while i can see a benefit to that there 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 the one thing i i i don't really get is the chances of that device not ending up somewhere where it can be tracked is pretty remote today if somebody steals your phone from a casino in las vegas i keep going back to nevada here and, and, and drives to new mexico in the middle of the desert you don't think they're ever going to try to turn that phone on where there's a signal and I don't even mean a cell signal, a Wi-Fi signal. As soon as it catches anything, you know, it's going to catch on. If it's got an air tag on it, again, it's going to catch on to Bluetooth somewhere. Now, I think the newer, because they got newer air tags coming out, by the way. I don't know about this for a fact, but maybe they will work with Wi-Fi as well. Because they're supposed to be hugely improved air tags. I understand. It's not a lot but of... But if, if Tile is only going to use their existing Bluetooth, and they're going to use the satellite system the biggest problem i see with that is and it has nothing to do with being out of the desert it has to do with being um you're yeah. in a warehouse that's a metal building and there's no other tile devices around 
satellites not going to see you exactly no tile device exactly around. you're not going to have any way of tracking your phone but yeah your buddy's got a samsung or a pixel or something over there that's got internet connection that it could connect to and track precisely so i think they're missing the mark and and here's the other thing too this is probably not going to happen for a few years but inevitably both apple and google and google probably wants to do it already um probably samsung too but apple eventually will probably concede within the next several years anyways that to make their device even easier to find on somebody that at least in a limited fashion it would be able to actually look at google's find my network to find the device because we'll be able to see if it's being tracked if, if they if somebody puts an apple air tag on uh illegally on our car or on our suitcase trying to track us or something like that right and we'll be able to get the notification saying hey there's an unknown tracker so why wouldn't it be able to go the other way around and say hey yeah. the tracker is outside of your network but it's being tracked by google's network right now here's the location that doesn't make it makes no sense that it wouldn't at least you know within a certain radius and it should be able to go the other way and i don't think apple's going to open up anything to it they'll just probably say We'll send you a notification if we get a notification so you can track that. But they won't let you track it if it's flagged as nuts, you know. In other words, the whole point is, is that if you try to put something on somebody else's stuff illegally, then the, the unknown device or unknown tracker has to be only known to the unknown tr tracker. Right? Yeah, but see, here's, here's another problem <laughs> but, I see with that, which I don't understand why they don't, like clue in on this right now my wife no longer uses an iphone so we're all android based however my <laughs> stepdaughter still uses an iphone my son-in-law has a samsung why would you not make it to where both members of that household could authorize either network to track either device you know how you know how powerful it would be to have this like network where you could use Google that's exactly, and you know, that's exactly what i'm talking about right i know that's what i'm saying but why wouldn't they have even if it's like i'm wife and husband i want to be able to um like authorize this app or that app or something right right you can you're, you're doing it within your own you know family network it's not yeah. like a global thing so you can't track my apple or vice versa but you can allow an app internally somehow authenticated to be able to do that i don't yeah i, I think if you're within that. a certain network like i yeah i i would I, I could see the benefit if like apple and, and google uh came together and said yeah if 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 a family or even a group of friends if that's so be it co-workers whatever uh basically you know did the you know the proper uh two-factor authentication to say yeah i'm going to allow this to track this and that to track that uh this is within a group we use different devices but we need to be able to track each other so because right. i mean let, let's let's face it let, let's say somebody breaks into your house and they steal all of your computers your wife's cell phone but you have your phone how, right. the, how the hell is she going to track her phone now you got to go buy a new computer she's got to log on before canceling the other one so she can track right. it and it makes no sense because the, they've like wiped it clean by then well not wiped it clean because not maybe right. a tape for God's sake. Which the only other <laughs> Apple device she has is a watch. She doesn't have an Apple Mac, so you can't log into the Mac. Is it an LTE watch? Um, no, but if it has Wi-Fi, you can still connect. Well, yeah, that that's true. Uh, which means she would be able to use the Find My Network. Well, right. Yeah, I, I don't see. I don't any Wi-Fi. No, it wouldn't be any Wi-Fi. If it's only Wi-Fi, it's that's to connect to her device. Is it not? I think only only. Cellular I don't know how the Apple network watches. works. I have I no idea. I think it's pretty much it's, well. Maybe with theirs I could. I think with theirs, as long as you have Wi-Fi, I don't think Google's implemented that in their watches yet. But uh, I think Samsung has. At least they used to on their older network. I, I'm not sure. I think you can do it as long as you have Wi-Fi. You don't necessarily need to be connected to anything else to do the Find My device, like whatever it's attached to. Oh God! It, excuse me dropping yeah i i don't know we're, we're, it's i just think they're missing the mark in the bigger picture of like i said with this family unit where you you're you might have what if you're a family of five and half of you use 
iPhone products and half of you use Android products. I mean, what if it's right, you know, right. parents and kids? You know, parents have this, kids have that. You want to be able to monitor your children without necessarily having to go and install some third-party app. Why what, can't you just do it natively within the operating systems by allowing the communication? I just don't see why that technology isn't feasible. I mean, you know, it, well, it's I'm not, not a programmer. It's not, so yeah, I don't know. well, it's I, not I, that it would be hard to program that kind of thing in because the whole point is that they can find each other. They can look for each other. Your device, if it can't do it yet, it will be able to find another tracker. Unknown, the whole unknown tracker thing is already implemented, both Apple right. and Google. Uh, well, sorry, Apple's is actually not technically alive yet, I think, until their next ios um i don't believe it is i may be incorrect but i, I don't think it is um I, I, and google's is not fully rolled out yet obviously yeah. uh as as you know because you have it and uh despite the fact that we're all supposed to have it by the end of the month i don't have it and i just saw an article that says that the new chipotle <laughs> sorry goodness this chipolo uh and pebblebees uh, that are compatible with the Google's Find My Device Network are, are starting to ship now. So people are going to have these things in a few days and be like, I thought you said I could do this when it was off. Uh, and, and, yeah. I'd... And no, right? So give us, give us what we're asking for, what you're telling us you're going to give us. Uh, although I will give them this. Almost everything they talked about in, in IO this year is stuff that is either already working, is in the process of rolling out, will be rolled out over the next several months, with the exception of a few things that they're talking about within the next year, year and a half. Um, up until last year, most times at Google I.O., they would talk about stuff that we either never saw or took two, three, even four or five years. Remember when they talked about that wonderful new thing they were going to put in Google Photos? that would allow you to erase the fence <laughs> yeah. in front of a subject so you could just see the subject without the fence blocking your right. view. That ended up not happening, but uh, exactly as is, but it ended up being Magic Eraser, which we just got less than a year ago, six months ago, actually, pretty much. Um, and that was originally from five years ago, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's... It, it's... <laughs> Typical. I gave up even Google thinking it was going to happen. Technology, just you know, yeah. they they I, sometimes I think manufacturers in general get a little overzealous with how quickly they can actually roll it out. And you, you know what? Let's scale. Make a, let's make a promise to to the viewers and listeners right now. Um, next next week, let's actually talk about the Google graveyard and do like a top ten <laughs> best things that they shouldn't have canceled and a top ten things that we're glad got done <laughs> that, might, that might take two i'm not weeks. even i'm not no it won't it's just 10 things we literally it was a joke about off. how much how many people how many oh things. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah well or not that's why i said top 10 because there's way more than 20 in total <laughs> way more and and by the way the google graveyard there, there is actually there's more than one site technically but i think there's one uh that might actually be called the Google Graveyard specifically. It is for that purpose. It lists everything Google ever started and canceled. And believe me, there are things on there that is very good idea that they canceled. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of things that they just never gave a shot. Uh, whether yeah. they were good or not, they never gave them a chance to find out. But we can talk about that. I think we should do it next week. There's the promise. We'll bring that up. Uh, so... <laughs> Getting on with it. Um, uh, what, what else we're we going with here? Well, the one thing I wanted to talk about, I sent you that. I sent you the wrong yeah. article, the wrong link. But yeah, uh, yeah. along with the right. AI subject is because this has just come out. Um, okay. With Microsoft just had their big technology thing. You know, it's that time of year. But um, they are coming out with co-pilot PCs that's got the neural processing unit built onto the board in the computer. So it's no longer going to have to be a cloud-based process. It's going to be a local-based process. Oh, so but because it's, they... Sorry, they just, but because they, they... We're talking about computers here and not phones, it's going to be a lot easier to make sure that that co-processor 
has what it needs on it and more than enough memory in the actual computer itself. So I'm assuming that you're saying this is not going to be Intel, is it? No, it's it's a Snapdragon ARM processor because mm-hmm. for one, they say the um, it's more efficient, which it is. Uh, they yeah, say absolutely. the power it's 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 able to I, I you know I don't I don't know I, I don't I guess we're gonna have to see I'm an early adopter you know I've always bought things early on I, I don't have any problem doing that they don't scare me but I would yeah, probably wait yeah. on that one because I'm not so sure how the arm processor thing is gonna work I I, I, I they say it's gonna be more powerful than Intel that that's oh that's, that's easy. why the Intel units yeah, no, that, aren't gonna be able to have that's, it that listen that's easy. All you got to do is open up the most powerful non-gaming laptop right now. Take a look at what's in it, if it's Intel, right? And then compare that to your Galaxy S23, never mind the S24. And you go, wait a minute now. If I had uh, uh, a, 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 a GPU that was meant for a laptop that worked with this processor, this would probably work better. I mean. Yeah, my laptop does a good job, as you know. <laughs> you know it very well. Uh, and, 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 but it, it's still, you know, older and slower. Um, this wouldn't even run a phone. Just to be clear, this laptop could not run a modern phone at all. If it was a Snapdragon with its current specs, it would not run a phone very well at all. So, I don't know. I just the architecture is just so different, and the problem it, it I is, see here's a problem I see with the ARM aspect, right? Is it does not natively run Windows applications, so they have to. I forget what they called it. I because I sent yeah, you the wrong I never article. About, yeah. I, I I didn't I don't I didn't save the right one, but they have something that's like layered in the ARM Windows OS that will not really an emulator but it'll allow you to install and run you know windows applications like normal i see that being problematic but do you, do you know what i you know what it sounds like to me it sounds like what what is the equivalent of a driver in in an arm architecture i don't know that there is one I well yeah well you're I'm right not that Technic- familiar with it so i Technic- don't know technically there isn't but it, it there is obviously something there there, there I can't remember what it's called. I used to know this when I actually was doing, you know, all that stuff we used to do with our phones back in the day before Google killed everything. <laughs> um, when you, uh, oh, good God, I can't remember what it's called. But um, I think what they're doing basically is they're having something that takes the place of drivers probably or talks to drivers. Uh, so not talks to drivers, takes the place of. So they can basically write the programs to say if the driver has to tell this to do this because of that instead of that it will just ask the program and then and 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 then and then do it because it, nothing is impossible if it's written in code then the code can be translated so it's most likely that oh you know what they're probably doing they're probably writing an uh, uh an intermediary code in between in kotlin which could actually easily read one code and translate it to the next i never thought of that till just now I wonder if that's possible. We should find out. Well, I'm uh, looking here because I, I I found the article. God, don't let me be completely you. wrong. I just that would just be one more thing I'm wrong about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to, you need to stop all your uh, predictions behind <laughs> while I'm behind. <laughs> well, that wasn't a prediction though. That that that's just a guesstimate. And, and I don't know. That's not a bad guesstimate though, because if you did, you would simply have to write a program. That, uh, uh, that would actually talk to Windows programs and that Kotlin could tell that program what to say and translate it back to the to, to, in, in, into uh, whatever the hell they, they're going to call the future version of Windows that's basically going to be 100% compatible with Android. <laughs> yeah. Well, Which and, is and great ironically... for Pixel users and, well, I mean, anybody with an Android. I was going to see Samsung, but I guess anybody with an Android. It's going to be great for all of us. But anyways, you were going to say. As soon as Windows did their announcement, I mean, almost instantaneously, I started getting emails from Samsung. New code pa- PCs available. You know, Acer, Asus, Dell, HP. They're all like throwing these, you know, Copilot PCs out in the wild now. Right. 
So Microsoft um, was way ahead of the game. Like they, they, but see, unlike unlike Google, they didn't sit there and tell you about all this shit, and then not do anything. <laughs> they kept it quiet for a long time. Dell kept it quiet. You know, everyone else, the, 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 all the partners kept it quiet, uh, which is which is fantastic. And be quite frank with you, I I I would buy one. I I would. Would I probably go with a cheaper one just in case? Maybe. Yeah, because see, like on the, the other arm hand, I would probably Adreno. go. I would probably go for a Surface, and this is why I believe it'll work because Microsoft has not released a Surface laptop since the very first one that sucked. Well, I'm sorry, maybe the second one was a little iffy, but after that, all of their Surface products have been the best PCs I've ever used. Period, desktop or laptop. I, I, you know, I, I'm not talking about for gaming here. Uh, I'm just talking about for your average everyday use. They're, they ran smooth as butter. They never gave me issues. Uh, but much like if you buy an Apple product, you you can you can take it to the Microsoft store, provided you bought it there, and say, "Hey, this is a problem with this. Uh, can you help me out?" And then I'll sit there and, and and either tell you how to fix the problem right there in front of them, or or, or they'll make arrangements so you have it repaired. So it's it's, it's a great system. So uh, Microsoft hardware, if they're putting it in their own surface and not just giving it to a third party to test it, like Google would probably do, like, then 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 I I uh, I would trust it. Well, that's uh, what they're putting I, in. That's it's it's the surface, the the laptops, the tablets. Yeah. I mean, they're that's what's all coming out. Yeah, with. but there's the, yeah, but there's other there's other companies mentioned, which means they have partnerships, so you, you can you can you can get it. You oh yeah, I mean they, they have a Galaxy room. Book. Samsung Galaxy Book has their new, you know, Copilot PC, you know, line. Yeah, now I would do that too. And but the reason why is even though I don't have a Samsung phone, because of the um, uh, uh, uh you know, the air the AirDrop competitor thing that Pixel and Samsung have, <laughs> uh, near not nearby share. What's it called? Quick Share. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. Samsung just kind of rejiggered theirs to work so that it would work with nearby share, but better, like quick share work. Uh, and Google said, we'll just switch to quick share and allow, you know, and so they partnered. And again, that's because we were talking about that, I think, from earlier, an early, much earlier podcast, how the, the partnership that Google and Samsung have, have done on, on software has, has made it better for everybody. Because these things are starting to trickle down to other other manufacturers now too, and right. now that they're going to have the co-pilot thing, that pretty much means the quick share thing on Samsung devices is automatic. Uh, but it's also available on any Windows, so that means it will just work better. Okay, here it is. I found it. So right. they have a new. It is an emulator, so I was wrong. Okay, it's, they have a new powerful emulator called Prism where your apps will run great, whether native or emulated. So that's how they're going to run native, current Windows-based type applications in the ARM uh, architecture is with this Prism emulator. So the Prism emulator was probably written in Kotlin. There you go. My experience with emulators is that they're not super reliable, but... We'll Usually that is true. I like 99.999999999999% of the time. But... If you remember, Apple introduced a long time ago the ability to run Windows inside a laptop or a computer, pardon me, uh, that, that shouldn't be able to run Windows via an emulator. And some people started, you know, in the early days, they had a little bit of an issue, but then they kind of fixed how that worked. And there are people who have, for years have said they have run Windows inside of, of, uh, of Mac OS for years. Uh, personal for one business for the other or two different businesses on the same one whatever uh so they kind of figured that out by basically making something that would allow them to run it within the same architecture despite yeah, see fact. this makes me want to go out and buy one just so i can see how, <laughs> how it works Test it out do a review and then we'll talk about your review on <laughs> yeah. this channel well and I, we'll I make i don't have a thousand dollars i want to go dump on a test though right now are you so. still are you are you, I'm sorry, I gotta ask this right now because this isn't kind of important. Are you still doing reviews on your other channel? Oh, of course, yeah, all the time. Okay, all right. Well, you, I think we need to plug your channel. I mean, like, you should yeah. be doing that. Gadget I mean, yeah, guys, you have, gadgets. 
there you go gadget guys gadgets you guys need to check that out and uh, if you don't have the link in the description put it in because why not right uh because yeah. uh he, he does he does some reviews he does uh, a lot of stuff he's got a lot of home automation stuff uh, yeah. in his house and and like so when if i have an issue and i gotta say you know what, i'm trying to get this to work and the directions are saying this and this is saying that and this should be working but it's not robert is the first one that i did i will call <laughs> and because he's like he's been through all kinds of stuff uh i have uh, one two three four five 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 lights in my bedroom and, and a couple of devices here and there blah 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 um he's got probably five lights just in his kitchen alone uh maybe more I, i'm uh, up to 90 in my house right now <laughs> like, uh, i'm talking about the just ones you can do, just the ones you can do with google home because if i'm not mistaken don't you have lights that don't work with google home as well but they are smart lights no everything has I you google. did i thought you did oh but they all so they all work with google home it's yeah like, yeah like i like my nighttime routine when i tell you know who good night it shuts every light off in the entire house yeah well mine does too but again it's only five. it's only five yeah. i'm a ba- i'm a baby when it comes to this, the whole all the automation thing i i got no door locks no doorbells none of that yet that's <laughs> how i discovered when hugh phillips hugh was like oh our hubs now you can they're you, you matter support and you can use matter instead of the old way and oh, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And it almost you remember destroyed I you. remember I did that. <laughs> yeah, I had to completely blow it up and rebuild it because matter completely was garbage. They did not yeah. implement that right at all. It, it, I think, yeah, I think they got a little ahead of themselves. It, it should have worked, but I think the problem was it, just that yeah. uh, the, the accessories were not ready for it. Um and it wasn't yeah. implemented in the home app properly, probably. Uh, and, and everything should be. I mean, I'm assuming that it's probably better now than it would have been then. But I have absolutely zero expectation for anybody who's already got 90 lights to switch that right now. Oh, uh, no. If you moved and you were going to a new home and you had to redo all your rooms and all that kind of stuff, then I would say, yeah, give it a shot because you got to re- you got to do it all from yeah, but it anyway, still is but... not smooth. Like I have some SwitchBot stuff that's Matter enabled, and it's just not a smooth process. Oh, so you not... you do have some stuff on Matter right now, and it's just yeah, it's, it's just not. But it it, yeah. it it did it worked faster, did it not? It does, but well, wait a minute. You know what? I think I switched. And I think inter- I switched something onto Matter. I don't remember, but I remember because I remember saying I, it seems like it it activates faster. But I have been having more issues of late. So I think whatever it is, is that when there's updates, they don't necessarily translate into the actual working properly and matter properly. <laughs> so there, there may be, they may have to implement updates differently than they've done in the past. I think yeah. if you get brand new stuff that, that says it works with matter out of the box and it's not first gen, but second gen stuff that's already been tested more than once and also awesome. by consumers then maybe it'll work better. Like if I went out and bought a, a brand new uh, Hue uh, hub and brand new Hue lights uh, or whatever, Govi, whatever, any anybody who, anything that works with Matter, if it said works with Matter on the box or has the Matter symbol on the box logo, then it, chances are that, that stuff might work better out of the box. Probably. Maybe. Um, but it's this older stuff. Like I, I honestly wonder, uh, like my, my, my few lights are, are working fine, but how much longer are they going to work fine? Because I swear, everything I do just takes a few seconds longer than like it used to be. Give the command, it's on. Then it was give the command, it's on. Oh, I, I've oh been this time all last year, it's give problems. the command, it's on. Now it's give the command. Hey, uh, didn't I just give you a command to do something? Yeah, I've been. Oh, okay, so I give the command again. It's on. (laughs) I have a motion sensor in my closet that's supposed to turn on my two Hue lights. It's a Philips Hue motion sensor. It's not a third party. Right. And I've been having issues now. When I open the door, I see the light on the motion sensor turn red because it sees the motion, but the lights don't come on. So basically, when you go in, the motion sensor knows you're there. You get everything you need done, you leave, and then it comes on after you're gone? 
I don't know if it does or not because the door is closed. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It it it, I, I, it sometimes oh. it doesn't come on because I have it where like I come in, it comes on, I close the door after 15 minutes of no motion, it turns the lights off. Been working great, and here over the last couple of weeks, the lights won't turn on, no matter what I do. I can wave my hand in front, of me and it just doesn't. They don't come on. It's so irritating. Uh, yeah, I I you know what I I don't really understand why it's such an issue i think maybe there maybe there should have been some public beta testing uh, i'm pretty sure they didn't do that kind of thing they did some focus testing they did uh lab lots of laboratory work and all that but i think because of the way they uh the thing with matter was trying i remember i remember reading all of the technical specs about how it worked a long time ago but i i gave up caring when i read nowhere that it worked well nowhere everyone talked about how bad it was actually uh, or that it would be great but it's not ready yet you know all the articles that came out in the last several months that were like why matter matters why matter doesn't matter you know <laughs> yes i i try matter matter, matter so more than matter <laughs> yes yeah. exactly right <laughs> yeah As i didn't want to try matter but i wanted to make sure that you knew matter didn't matter so i mattered I, you know yeah it, all kinds of weird things like that and youtube videos about it and 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 i kind of gave up uh and i stopped paying as much attention but uh yeah. the bottom line is, is it's, it's it's a fantastic idea of something that should be fantastic it's probably better now than it was when it started Sure. A few years sure. from now, it and it's got probably, great promise. And I think will, it's going to be a fantastic way of communicating. But a matter two point maybe you know, yeah. uh, should be fantastic. But as for right now, no. Um, but yeah. I, you know, I can't, I can't see with my glasses on. How long have we been going here? We want to make sure we. Oh my goodness, oh, we've really been that long. Yeah, we've got about eight or ten minutes. So, oh yeah, it's not as much. So, uh, I seem to have lost the other uh i had some subjects on here and i seem to have lost them so oh uh, the only other uh, thing we were going to talk about it's just kind of like um you know we already discussed the tiktok thing we were just going to make mention that Can the canadian intelligence agency has warned canadians to not use tiktok we all know that this is kind of coming down the way it's really going to stem on whether the u.s truly makes it a banned application as to really what's going on. Yeah. However, I did read, um, and I forgot to write down the countries. There was um, two or three countries that actually banned TikTok because they're having some current unrest. So they banned TikTok because they don't want people out there making TikTok videos of what's going on in their country. So, yeah. you know, I don't know. The yeah, whole TikTok the, thing is, yeah. It's, yeah, well, it's a little different than the Canadian thing is because, uh, again, as I had mentioned um Canada will basically fall in line with what the States is doing when it comes to um, political matters that have to do with security. Uh, much the same as uh, when 9-11 happened, uh, Canada closed their airspace as well. And the only reason why it remained open longer was to force airplanes to land as quickly as possible if they were not past the point of no return coming from Europe or Japan or whatever. They were they had to turn around if they had fuel if they were past that point they had to land in canada they were not allowed to go to the u.s and the canadian uh military uh air force had jets in the air uh prepared just in case but they they also uh were prepared to force any aircraft to land if they refused there were a few pilots that said no no uh no we're landing at toronto or montreal or whatever or we're headed, you know, no, air, the American airspace is closed. You can't go. You'll be shot down. <laughs> okay. That was actually true. You'd be shot down if you tried at this point. Uh, so yeah. they, they, they said, no, you no, you know, uh, you have to land now. And they said, well, we're going to go on to Toronto. I said, no, you can't. You are, you are ordered to land. Like this is this, then these, these are air traffic controllers. And what, what uh, some people might not understand is, if they give you an order because the government or or whoever's in charge of of, of the air you know uh, airspace at that point in time, they are in charge. Their word is law at that point. So when they said no, you will land right now. And you if you can look it up, uh, you find uh, stuff some stuff on YouTube, and 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 you can actually hear the audio. One pilot who's actually saying, and he said it a couple of times. No, we have to go to Toronto or or whatever city it was. 
And he said, no, you have to land right now again. Uh, there, there's no option for you. If you pass the point of no return, you are landing now. You are not flying over air, Canadian airspace at all, and you are not permitted to fly over American airspace. <laughs> and, and they were very adamant about it. And said, oh, okay, all right. They, they weren't told why in any way, shape, or form before they hit the ground. They didn't want anybody to know. They, so they, they just, you have to come down. Uh, and I actually forgot why I brought that up. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure how that related to TikTok, but I was just going to let you keep Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. No, it does relate. It does relate because basically what they were doing was they were immediately following suit because, again, it was a matter of security. So it, it goes the same way with just about anything else. Uh, if if United States says, uh, this is a country we're warning everybody to get out of and we're pulling our, our, our ambassador out and the whole bit, right, everybody? Uh, Canada generally, if not right away, within a very short period of time, will do the same thing. And I'm sure and vice versa, it would, it would work the same way too. It, well, it, it probably would because Canada usually wouldn't do that unless right. the United States has basically said, you should tell your people not to go there and this is why. Um, Canada, the United States, and Britain very closely share their intel on enemies that they see as a common enemy. It doesn't necessarily apply the same to something like uh, Israel pissing people off <laughs> uh, right. because they're not considered an enemy to the West, right? So uh, if Canada has some intel and they're saying, well, we think that they might be doing this during this war, and this is why, they might share that with the U.S. and vice versa, but they're not necessarily going to do the same thing. Right in regard. Well, the Canadian Security uh, Intelligence Service said CSIS. blank. Huh? CSIS. Sorry, the, go on. That's what they call it. CSIS is this Canadian Security Intelligence okay. Service. Uh, it said point blank without a shadow of a doubt. Um, it is available to the government of China. The data. Yeah, TikTok absolutely. Absolutely, one hundred percent adamantly denies it, saying they have actually you know quarantined all their north american data off into other north american servers again i i you know no way for us average yeah. people to yeah yeah, yeah quantify exactly. that but, but even if there's truth to that that means somebody in china still has access to those north american servers i mean yeah, I, there's a reason for that right so maybe nothing yeah. bad is being done with it maybe right but i i, I kind of get why they're saying no uh, it's not a good idea. So if if a ban goes full on in the United States of America, Canada will have to follow it because it would just make no sense that you would be able to be standing 25 feet from the Canadian border and log on to Canadian Wi-Fi or have <laughs> somebody <to> <laughs> ship you a, a, a an LTE card or, or 5G card, whatever, right? stick it in your phone and and, and and be close enough to the Canadian border to use it and not be considered roaming and 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 and, and, be, and get onto TikTok. And, and it would be legal? Well, it technically wouldn't because then it would be like having to criminalize a bunch of 13-year-old teenagers for using TikTok illegally in border towns. <laughs> and, and it would make no sense, right? So... A flat out ban on it would actually create a, a, an issue where how would they stop people who have it? Yeah. How would they shut down the servers that fast? It, well, it, it, we'll have to just see how this where this goes. And, and and as it moves forward, you know, I'm sure we'll cover it in future, you know, episodes. Yeah. Because yeah. obviously this is gonna be an ongoing story. It's not like ending anytime soon so we'll definitely be covering it again as it as it moves forward so but just um, remember next week we're going to do the google we're going to the graveyard graveyard <laughs> on my end of it i'm lionel in toronto i'm going to say my goodbyes right now we'll leave it right on now. my end i'm robert from the u.s and we'll catch you next week